Some of you might already know that Helium is going to modify its underlying algorithm for the proof of coverage challenge. In particular, they are going to implement POC version 11, whereas the current one is version 10. In this video, I'll discuss in detail what changes are going to come with version 11, the new anti-gaming protocol, and how it will be better for legit witnesses. During the video, I'll also cover some of the important concepts like FSPL and RSSI. Hey folks, this is Roy and welcome back to my channel, Eigentech. Let us first cover some of the important topics. The first one is what is a DBM unit of power? For this, I like to use the example of a light bulb. You know that a light bulb draws electricity and emits light. And you must be familiar with the power rating. So a light bulb uh, could have 10 watt of power or 5 watt of power. And this is actually the linear unit of power. However, it is more convenient to use the logarithm unit or DBM unit for LoRa applications. This is the mathematical expression. So power in DBM unit is equal to 10 times log of power in milliwatt unit. And this log is log to the base 10. Now to convert from watt to milliwatt, you need to simply multiply it with 1000. So 10 watt becomes 10,000 milliwatt, 5 watt becomes 5000 milliwatt. And if you use this expression, uh, this one becomes 40 dBm and this one 5 watt is 37 dBm. So you can see a drop of factor of 2 reduces the power by 3 dBm. So it became 40 to 37. There are a few other important numbers or interesting numbers to remember. 1 milliwatt which is equal to 0.001 watt equals 0 dBm. And any power which is larger than 1 milliwatt like 5 watt or 10 watt is always a positive dBm number. And any power which is less than 1 milliwatt, like let's say 0.001 milliwatt, will be a negative number. In this case, minus 20 dBm. Now, an, an antenna is similar to a light bulb, but it emits radio waves, which you cannot see. And usually at the frequency of, uh, let's say in the US, 915 MHz, and in Europe, 868 MHz, and some Asian countries, 923 MHz. Uh, some of the important numbers to remember here is that in US the maximum power that the helium hotspot radiates is 27 dBm which is equivalent to 501 milliwatt and in the Europe the maximum power is only 12 dBm which is 15.8 milliwatt. The next topic is how power changes as a function of distance and this is a very important concept because this is what is behind the detection of location spoofing and penalizing those hotspots. So let us try to understand this. So if you have a source of light like a light bulb, you know that the intensity is reduced uh, when you move away from the source. And the same is also true for an antenna. The strength of the radio signal is diminished as you move further away. Actually the electric and magnetic field goes down as a function of 1 over distance square. So the power which is a product of electric and magnetic field uh, goes as 1 over distance to the power 4, it's inversely proportional to the distance to the power 4th. The implication of this is that if you double the distance, the power will be 6 dB less. And I'll discuss this in more detail in the coming slides. Next, we'll do some math. If you go to Wikipedia and search for free space path loss, you'll find this expression. So this is the ratio of received power to the transmitted power by, a, by an antenna. Uh, so PT and PR as I said is the transmitter and receive power, DT and DR are the directivity of the transmitter and receiver's antenna. Lambda is the wavelength of the signal of the radio frequency and D is the distance. If we use this equation, lambda is equal to C divided by F, where C is the speed of light and F is the frequency, then this expression can be rewritten in this more useful format. And the FSPL, which is a loss, is basically the inverse of this expression. So FSPL is 1 over dTDR and uh, this number also flipped. But remember, this is in the linear unit and it is more useful to express FSPL in the logarithmic unit. So for that, we take a, a logarithm of this expression and multiply that with 10. And then you get this expression after performing some math. Uh, don't, you don't need to worry about it, uh, I will simplify this expression. So here this number, 10 log of the directivity, that is actually the gain of the antenna. So then using this expression, you can uh, simplify it further. So it becomes 20 log of 4 pi by C, 
plus 20 log of distance 20 log of f is the frequency and minus the gain of the transmitter minus the gain of the receiver and this number is just a constant where c is the speed of light which is 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second and you can also express d in um, kilometer and frequency in megahertz and then this, is, this becomes the final simplified expression so uh, that is of the math so let us try to look at how the graph looks like so we have a visual intuition so here on the y-axis i am drawing the fspl in db unit and along the x-axis i have distance in kilometer there are two graphs here two lines here the blue one is the fspl for the 915 megahertz and the red one is for 868 megahertz and they are almost uh, over overlapping so almost equal to each other and you can see the loss increases very quickly in the beginning and then kind of slows down but what we are interested is uh, in the uh, received power okay so using this curve we can actually uh, calculate the received power which is pr equals the transmitted power minus this loss now what is the transmitted power for USA, uh, the total transmitted power is 27 dBm. So to get then the received power, you just subtract 27, uh, so you subtract the FSPL from 27 and this is the curve for 915 MHz. So you can see when the two hotspots are very close to each other, say around 100 meter or so, the expected uh, added, uh, received signal strength is about minus 40 dBm. And it reduces with distance around a 10 km is slightly less than minus 80 dBm. But what does this graph tell you? This tells you that if the transmitter is sending 27 of 27 dBm of power, this is the upper limit of the power received at the receiver side. So one cannot achieve a power larger than this uh, blue curve. So anything below this blue curve is still valid because there could be more loss uh, due to other um, and like building structures trees etc but one cannot have a more power above this graph so anything in this part will be invalid that will not be physically possible or that is not allowed by physics so this is the actually idea which is used to detect spoofing as i will tell you later also note that as i mentioned earlier if you double the distance so whatever the value is at two kilometer at four kilometer the value will be six db less similarly at eight kilometer the value will be further 6 dB less. Now, this received power is often called as RSSI or Received Signal Strength Indicator that we will find in the helium literature or many of the witnessing events. Let us now see how this graph is actually used for detecting location spoofing. Let's say the actual distance between two hotspots is around 100 meter and the asserted location so by placing the uh, placing the helium hotspot on a wrong location on the helium map the distance is about two kilometer okay so what will happen when one of the hotspots sends a beacon and that signal is received by the other hotspot so the, since the distance is about 100 meter uh, the received signal strength will be will be about minus 40 dbm by the other one however uh, since the asserted location uh, asserted distance is two kilometer it will look like at 2 km the RSSI value is about minus 40 but you can see that from the theory uh, the expected signal level would be around minus 70 dBm and this number is way higher than minus 70 dBm so clearly uh, this is a case of location spoofing in other words uh, this signal is telling you that uh, it is not physically possible to receive such a strong signal uh, at 2 km distance so this must be is case of spoofing so in that case the invalid the witness will become invalid in particular you will get a, an error message which says witness rssi too high okay uh, in the current poc version 10 actually this is not used what is used is the rssi versus snr snr stands for signal to noise ratio and the green zone is valid the red part is invalid but it turns out that this is not the best way of detecting the validity of the witness and so this will no longer be used and what will come next is the um, so in the version 11 this graph or some slight modification could be slight modification of this graph will be used and this will be more accurate so you can see now with version 11 the anti-gaming will be stronger and those uh, location spoofed cases will get less valid witnesses as a result less it will earn less HNTs 
I will let us talk about the actual signal propagation chain. So uh, what I talked about earlier is only the FSPL or the path loss. But here uh, you can see in this curve there are more components involved. So you have the transmitter radio which in this case sends 20 dBm of power. Then there is a cable and cable has some loss. So it's slightly different you can see the loss in the cable inside a cable is linear in dBm units whereas in the, the loss in the free space is exponential okay so in this particular case it's minus 5 db so the signal becomes um, plus 15 dbm here but then there's an antenna which is a 10 db again so it becomes plus 25 and then there is a free uh, path loss which is about 115 db in this case and then finally there is a gain of the least antenna on the receiver side which boosts the signal by plus 12 dbi and then finally lost by this cable which and then finally this is the received power on the receiver side so this is the complete picture and you can see that this is the ideal path loss but in reality it will be more because of other buildings trees uh, some topography etc uh, let us now talk about the uh, second change which is coming to poc v11 so this is the expression that i showed you earlier and remember the GT and GR were the gain of the antennas on the transmitter and receiver side. And let us take a particular example where distance is 10 km, frequency is 915 MHz and both the antennas have a gain of 5.8 dBr. So if you use this expression you will see that the ideal RSSI for 27 dBm power would be minus 73.1 dBm. However due to more loss as I mentioned earlier let's say the actual RSSI is about minus 76 dBm. Now the problem is with POC version 10, the GT and GR is set to a default value of 1.2 dBi. It's not considering the actual antenna gain. So if you use this expression and the theoretical RSSI will become minus 82. Now you can see there's a problem. So theoretical RSSI is much lower than the actual RSSI value. And in this case, the POC version 10 will uh, tell that uh, this is an invalid signal with the same um, error message. However, this is actually a legit witnessing but the error came only because the, of the improper um, implementation of the algorithm. So in POC V11, this is going to be improved by considering the actual gain of the antenna. So if you consider this ant antenna gain, uh, this wind test will become fine. So this is the second important change which is going to come to the V11 and it will give all of us better valid witnesses. So some of these cases will go away. Next we will talk about the third change in the POC V11 and this is about the reduced transmitted power when your hotspot sends a beacon signal. So the maximum transmitted power by the helium hotspot is 27 dBm in the US and 12 dBm in the Europe. It might slightly vary for other countries. And the maximum allowed EIRP, which is effective isotropic radiated power, is 36 dBm for the US and 16 dBm for the Europe. I will not go too much details about EIRP, but uh, the point is then the maximum antenna gain that one can use in the US is 9 dBi, which is a difference of 36 and 27, and 4 dBi, which is difference of 16 and 12 for the Europe. So the question is what will happen if you use 9 dBi antenna in the Europe then the total EIRP will be 9 plus 12 equals 21 dBm which is 5 dB higher than this allowed value. So VSC, uh, POC V11 will take that into consideration and in that case in order to abide by the local regulations it will reduce the transmitted power by 5 dB. So it will become uh, 12 minus 5 equals 7 dB, uh, dBm of transmitted power so that 7 dBm with 9 dB antenna, 9 dBi antenna, you are still the maximum is 16 dBm. So basically, the transmitted power will now be reduced considering the antenna gain so that it abides by the local regulations. To summarize, there are three important changes that are going to come to POC version 11. The first one is that it's no longer going to use the RSSI versus the SNR graph, and instead, it's going to use RSSI versus the distance graph which is based on the free space path loss calculation. It might not use the exact expression that I showed you in this video, but it will be somewhat similar. And as a result, the detection of location spoofing will be much better, it will be improved, and uh, those hotspots which are location spoofing will be penalized even stronger. 
that is the first change the second change is that the incorporation of the gain of the antenna on both on the receiver and transmitter side so earlier the default value of 1.2 dbi was being used and as a result the people who were using uh, high gain antennas were often receiving invalid witnesses saying that the rssi value is too strong and with this incorporation of uh, gain at both receiver and transmitter end those problem will be solved so you will have a improved detection of valid witnesses and finally the third point is that since uh, the gain of the antenna is being considered the transmission power will be adjusted so that it abides by the local regulatory transmission levels and the last question is when is this going to be implemented the code is still under review however it is going to be rolled out pretty soon and there will be an announcement two weeks in advance so that those people who have not updated the gain information of their antenna in the helium app can have enough time to do so i hope this information is useful to you if you have any more question let me know in the comment section that's all for today thanks for watching guys and get cryptonized